In this video, for a flipped linear algebra classroom, we discuss how to solve systems of linear equations and the basics of a linear algebra course. This video specifically will cover the definition of a linear equation, the definition of a system of linear equations, um, how to solve basic two-dimensional linear equations, and visually representing whether or not a solution uh, to a pair of linear equations and two variables exists or does not exist. Before we get more serious in talking about techniques for solving systems of linear equations, let's just formalize what we mean when we say, what is a linear equation? So a linear equation in some n unknowns is an equation that can be written in the form a1x1 plus a2x2 plus all the way up to an xn is equal to b. So when we write an equation like this, what we mean is all of our ai's and our b are constants that we're taking from some field. Uh, and most often in this course, when we're looking at a field, we'll either be looking at the field of real numbers or the field of complex numbers. But if we don't want to specify, we'll often just use the letter k to refer to more general fields. We'll come back in a later um, session and talk about what what is this this field I keep referring to. But for now, you can just think about fields as um, sets of numbers where you can add two numbers together, multiply two numbers together, um, the associative uh, and distributive properties hold, and everything's commutative. So there there are a few other properties of fields that we're gonna worry about later, but. Um, for now, if I ever say field, you can feel perfectly comfortable just thinking to yourself, ah, she must mean the real numbers or the complex numbers. We'll also, um, instead of writing out x1 through xn, if we're dealing with either um, two-dimensional space or three-dimensional space, we'll often just use the letters x and y when we're dealing with um, two dimensions or x, y, z if we're looking at three dimensions. I'd also like to point out, um, before we move on to the next slide, that if you're given an equation that's nicely written in this form already, it's pretty easy to recognize when you're looking at a linear equation. Um, you guys might be presented with equations that are you know, not so secretly linear equations, but you have to rearrange them to recognize them for what they are. On the next slide, we're going to look at several examples of linear equations that we can recognize after a careful rearrangement and two equations that are not linear. On the previous slide, we were given several examples of equations that were already nicely in a form that was very easy to recognize as a linear equation. On this slide, I have four more examples, um, two of which will be linear equations, two of which it turns out aren't. But let's look a little closer and see um, how we can rearrange these to show whether they are or aren't linear equations. Um, so I think a good place to start is going to be this first one. So let's pull him out. Looking at our first equation, which you see I've pulled out and put over there on the right, um, the only thing that separates this from like the normal presentation of a linear equation is we've got one of our variables and a coefficient on the right, and we've got one of our constants not multiplied by a variable on the left. So you can see that I've rearranged um, all of the copies of x1, um, moved them to the left-hand side of the equation, and moved that sort of rogue constant, negative 3, over to the right. Um, now that I've rearranged everything, I'm going to group all of the like terms. And since we've got different copies of uh, x1, um, we're just going to collect their coefficients. And I'll, on the right, like take care of our two constants out there. So after careful rearrangement and collecting like terms, we see that that first equation is a linear equation um, with uh, that simplifies to 2x1 plus 3x2 is equal to 10. So as soon as we've gotten it in this form, which is you know not too bad, we can see pretty clearly that this is just like the linear equations that we had on the first page. Um, for our next equation, um, 
we can rearrange it in a similar fashion. And you'll notice this time there's an x1, an x2, and an x3. So we're going to distribute our constants in both of these terms out and simplify, you know, move everybody containing a variable to the left-hand side of the equation and move everyone that doesn't contain a variable, so all of our constants, to the right. All right, you can see that I've already taken the first step and I distributed those um, the left-hand side of the equation. So we're going to zoom in and actually finish this up to rearrange it in the standard form for a linear equation. So we're going to take leave our term uh, 3 times the square root of x1 on the left-hand side. We're going to move this term um, to the left-hand side. We'll keep our 5x uh, x3 on the left-hand side, and we'll take both of our constant terms and move them to the right. So our final rearranged form of this equation is going to be 3 times the square root of 2x1 uh, minus 3x2 uh, plus 5x3 and all of that's going to be equal to negative uh, 6 times the square root of 2 minus 5. So for our final two equations, you guys might have already noticed looking at this that both of these look fairly different from the first two. Um, specifically, when we start examining these, we see that um, this equation contains a copy of the variable x, um, but raised to the second power. And similarly, it has a copy of y to the second power here. By definition, all of our linear equations have to contain only like power, uh, the variables to a single power. So this equation is not going to be the type of equation that we're going to solve in a linear algebra course. So this is not a linear equation, and it won't appear in linear systems. Um, same with this one. There's a a square root of x squared. So this equation, um, while there are ways to solve equations that contain variables that are, uh, you know, that are not linearly related to one another, um, the focus of this course is really going to be just studying equations of the first two types here. So now that we have the definition of a linear equation down, let's look at systems of linear equations. So for a system of linear equations, we're looking at now collections of these. So um, typically, um, again, they, they're all going to have to involve the same set of variables. Examining the two equations currently shown on the screen, we see that we have variables x and y present here. Um, so we're going to look at, um, given a pair of linear equations in for example, two variables, x and y, um, let's look at, um, once we have this definition of a system, let's look at what it really means to solve an equation like this. So for this system, we say that a solution to a system of linear equations is a set of values. So for example, if we had x1 through xn, we'd be looking for values s1 through sn that satisfy all the equations. Um, by satisfy, we mean if we plug in um, s1 for x1, s2 for x2, all the way through sn for xn, a solution to a set of linear equations would just be a set of values s1 through sn that make all of the equations present in our system true. Let's examine this definition of solution by actually calculating one for that system of linear equations we looked at on the last page. Um, some of you may have noticed, since we're looking at two equations in two unknowns, um, instead of writing x1 and x2 all of the time, I've started writing x and y. That's pretty standard when we're, we're dealing with just two, or when we move up to three variables, we'll look at x, y, and z. Um, in general, so long as you're consistent with your naming of your variables of your unknowns, you'll be set. Um, so let's look at how um, two techniques that we can use to solve systems of linear equations. And many of these you'll actually have seen in a pre-calculus course. So um, the two early techniques that you may have seen in other classes to solve systems of linear equations include substitution and combination. So with substitution, which I'll move this guy down here while we actually work through a problem in substitution, um, 
we look at our equations and we solve for one variable in terms of all of the other variables present. So we rewrite our second equation um, so that we get x alone by moving y to the right hand side of our equation and then we're going to take that and plug that back in to our first equation. So after plugging this in we get uh, we get 3 times 3 minus y minus 2y is equal to 4. This simplifies to 9 minus 3y minus 2y is equal to 4. And grouping like terms and moving, um, like basically simplifying it a little bit further, we get 5y is equal to 5, which simplifies further to y is equal to 1. So plugging that back into our first equation, we actually see that y is equal to 1 um, gives us that x is equal to 3 minus 1, or x is equal to 2. So using the substitution method, we see that we have a solution, x is equal to 2, y is equal to 1, which we would write using the notation that we saw earlier as, as s1, uh, s2 is equal to 2, 1. Uh, we're also going to go through this one more time, writing it as a combination, since this is another like, fairly direct and easy technique. Um, so let's set up our combination system and be right back. When using combination, one of our goals is going to be to find a way to cancel out copies of variables. So you notice that when I've rewritten my system, I actually started um, by copying this down by taking the first step. I multiplied my second equation um, by 2 because my goal is to cancel out the positive copies of y I have in the second equation with the negative copies of y I have in the first. So looking at the two of these and combining them, so I add both equations. Um, since both of these um, equations hold, we should be able to add them term by term and get a third equation that's also true. And so the equation that we get is is 5x is equal to 10. So this was just adding up term, term by term all of the coefficients of x to get 5x, all of the coefficients of y to get 0y, so I didn't write it out, and all of our constants to get 10. So this simplifies to immediately um, x is equal to 2. With x is equal to 2 in hand, we can go back to our x plus y is equal to 3 equation that we had before and see that 2 plus y is equal to 3, or y is equal to 1. So while this is a separate technique, um, this is often faster, especially if you're doing small equations. Um, again, the goal of this course is not to practice the same techniques that you guys saw in Algebra 1 or Pre-Calculus. Um, we're going to have a whole new batch of tools to solve larger um, systems of equations quickly and efficiently, but just as a warm-up and a reminder of some of the things you guys have already seen. Um, these might be techniques to solve linear algebra problems that you guys have run into in previous classes. At least in the case of two-dimensional linear systems, there's actually a nice interpretation of how we can actually picture like uh, uh, solutions that satisfy both um, of a pair of linear equations that we've been given. So if you look on the right, I've actually graphed both of those linear equations that you can see on the left. So uh, typically when we picture doing this by hand, you guys have probably been taught the slope-intercept formula for, for different lines. Um, we could actually produce that here if we need to, but just take my word for it, we've, we've graphed the, the lines corresponding to 3x minus 2y is equal to 4, and x plus y is equal to 3. Um, and you can actually see on this picture the place that they intersect is our solution that we calculated on the previous slide. So this solution, which was x is equal to 2, y is equal to 1, is the unique point that sits on both of these lines. So solutions, another way to picture them is they're going to be the intersection of lines. As we get to higher and higher dimensional space, we'll start talking about hyperplanes but we can interpret whether or not a system has a solution by asking whether or not the lines 
corresponding to our systems of equations intersect or not. In the case of a system of, uh, a system of linear equations in two variables where we have two equations, there are actually three different situations that could happen. In one of our situations that we saw on the previous two slides, our two lines intersect at a unique point. So that unique point um, gives us exactly one solution to our system of linear equations. Um, given two equations that define lines that are parallel, as these two equations do, and you can solve these on your own if you're curious to see what the slope-intersect formula for these two lines would be, um, we have, for two lines that are parallel, there will be no solutions present. And there's one more scenario that can occur for, um, for two linear equations and two variables, which is our two equations that we're given might actually define exactly the same line. So in this case, you can actually see we have infinitely many solutions lying along that line. So don't take it as a, a given just because your equations look somewhat different that there's necessarily one unique solution present. And we'll return to this in later lessons, but for now, one of the takeaways is the situation that we saw for those, um, for two, uh, two equations and two variables, the idea of there being exactly one solution if our lines intersect in a unique point, um, no solution if the lines defined by our equations are parallel to one another, or infinitely many solutions if our lines intersect, um, so overlap at infinitely many places, it turns out this is going to hold for all systems of linear equations in any number of variables. And we'll see that the, the type of solutions we get might be a little more complicated than this, but every system of linear equations is going to fall into one of these three cases. Either no solutions, exactly one solution, or infinitely many solutions. So this is the end of the first set of slides, and in our next lesson we're going to return and look at using matrices and matrix algebra to start approaching solutions to linear equations more generally.